gonna dance, everybody yeah, be Yeah, we doing. on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss Talk. We gonna do it how you want it. Boss Talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss Talk. It's a unique hustle. Boss check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not you know my dad walk on. Man, listen, man. But before you get like into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. There are content on all platforms. We're on TikTok, Facebook, IG, YouTube. We, we are now on Patreon. That's where you're going to find our full-length interviews after a while. we just prepping you all for this because YouTube will not be carrying it after a while no more. But for a small membership fee, you can Ooh. see all our full-length interviews before time. Just to let you know that on our Patreon channel, Boss Talk Podcast One Hundred and One on Patreon. Man, I'm gonna do a special yeah, shout out. Up. Do a special shout out for uh, the coffee bean uh, tea leaf uh, down there. They gave me a cup of ice for a dollar here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Everybody mm-hmm. else is trying to charge me three fifteen to five seventy five. So you uh, know, for some, for ice. some ice, yeah. For and this young ice. lady that I stayed and talked to when y'all left me gave me this cup of ice, and she says always a dollar. I said you'll get my business every time I'm at this hotel. Mm-hmm. So man. Shout out to Coffee Bean Tea Leaf. And that's that good ice, too. Man, mm. oh, Lord. <laughs> that's we, that fire ice. <laughs> Say, man, that, listen, man. This that guy's so good. Listen, <laughs> this guy right here don't need no introduction, y'all. If you guys yes, have watched Boss Talk 101, this guy has been on the show before. Mm. Um, this is going to be his second time, man. This guy right here, man, Thank got you. a lot of West Coast stories that he about to lay on us today. We going in. This guy right here, a man don't need no introduction. If you from the west side, west side, you already know what it is, man. Clint Payback Sand is in the building. Yeah, man, I'm back, man. Lightning strikes twice. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm glad to see y'all again, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't get interviewed like that, you know? You don't? No, not like that, not like that. I mean, you know, I do my thing. I got around, <laughs> my nigga. I'm like buying the scene, you know what I'm saying? Man, I just love the way your energy is. And shout out to Kenyatta, man. Y'all. I yeah, love, my brother, I Kenyatta. Love positive wear, uh, cool. Love y'all, brothers, man. Like, like for real, for real, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all always show me mad love and respect. And it's been real with y'all. Like, I, I really be, you know, on some real conversation type. You know for what so, I mean? So, so it's just, You could tell you guys was raised in good homes. Sorry for the loss of your dad, you thanks, know. Thanks, um, thank you, thank you. You know, uh, me and him talk through that. You know, I was mm-hmm. on the, we were talking the whole time. So it's just an honor and a pleasure, you know, to be them being a part of you guys' legacy in your life, bro. Man, that's on appreciate sweet. you. Appreciate yeah, you, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, like I never forget it. You know what I'm saying? I never forget it, man. Every interview I do, people be like, you get this guy, you get that guy. But the ones that count the most is the one that touch my heart. And you guys, y'all touch my heart. It's Thanks, a difference, man. bro. It's a difference. Thanks, you appreciate man. it. So let's get into it, man. We're gonna get all we're we gonna get all in your business, man. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. I wanna first start off by saying don't run up on everybody you think cause, cause size don't matter. I heard about the little Asian dude that kinda yeah, that's you what up I back was in gonna the day. Get into. I don't wanna just go there, you know, that Asian Persuasion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had to he had to do so, do a little dizzle with you. What yeah. happened? What happened? <laughs> I wanna hear that story. Man. How did, you get kicked? Did he do them karate kicks on you? Hell yeah. This what did little, you do? Why would you test an Asian kid? This little, um, can I ask? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm bilingual English mm-hmm. and Ebonics. I kind of mm-hmm. like go back and forth. Be, no, you be, good. Be, be, be limited with this it. This little Asian motherfucker, he looked like Jet Li or something. She was little, skinny, probably looked like 100 pounds wet, but he knew jujitsu and all, whatever, all kind of little shit. So we, we was gangbanging back in the day. You know what I'm saying? We had our little gangbang talk, right? We was gangbanging, and he was down with with a, some old other set. And we were like, man, you, y'all must be some punks. Y'all must be woo-woo for you to be in it, you little motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I just kept talking shit to him. One day, he said, man, say one more thing. I guess his dad whooped his ass and said, you better fight him next time he say something. And so <coughs> his dad said something to him. He was coming out of school. And he looked at me all crazy like, woo <laughs> He came up and he was like, whoa. whoa. I said, what the fuck are you doing? I said, I put my hands up. I said, you want some of this? He dipped down to the ground and swung his leg on like right above the ground. Knocked you out. And hit my feet. I went flying in the air like Charlie Brown. I was like, oh, like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I was like, oh shit, I don't want no part of that shit. What the fuck was that? 
Man, I got off it, man. I'm cool, I'm cool, whatever, man, whatever, man. You left me alone. Man. Wow. You know, that was, that's, the, that's the thing about it, man. You never underestimate your opponent. You never answer. Who you hear that story from, my brother? <laughs> yeah, was that, that the first and only time that ever happened? That's the only fight I ever lost. But that one, in, that was like... How old were you? I didn't think that was a fight. Was like, I was probably like 10 yeah, or 11 or something like that. Okay. Little kid. Um, I think right after that, went to New York. I got these relatives, like Nino Browns, mm -hmm. like the real Nino Browns mm -hmm. in, in New York, right? And one of them was Ramel. Ramel beat me up. He said, man, you a punk. He, he, he did something to me. I was like, oh, stop. He beat the hell out of me, right? And then I went home. And I was like, after I got hit, you feel like getting hit ain't that bad. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, I'm fighting everybody. <laughs> I'm beating up. I, bu I beat up the school bully. I was beating up everybody. Like, what? Wow, knocking people T5. It was crazy. I turned into a monster, but then I calmed down. You just love fighting right at You should have just went into boxing right after that. I should have. I was good. Man, <clears throat> so man, let, let's talk about the West Side for a minute, man. You know, I've been I've been actually interviewing a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, people tell these stories about like Tupac. Like I just interviewed a guy. Shout out to Reggie Wright, and he was telling me about this Reg. story. And I just, you know, when when Tupac died, like you was out in you was on the West Coast. Or was uh, you? Yeah, I was on the West Coast, man. And when that era was going down, like how was the temperature? between the East and the West Coast to you? Did you really feel like that was beef between East Coast and West Coast? Would you, like at that time, because you go to New York and stuff, were you, you playing a little different at that time or were you just steadily just going like nothing wasn't wrong? Uh, I went out there thinking that was wrong because I, I thought it was just death row and bad boy. Mm -hmm. But it did trickle down. <laughs> and so I was playing bass for... Um, Easy Mo B's brother. Easy Mo B produced all the Biggie, Big Biggie records. So his brother LG was producing the Illinois Scratch. Okay. So they flew me out there and we was in a popular studio. And their studios is where Tupac got shot at. So their studios is different floors, got different studios. That whole building is studios, you know what I'm saying? But in the middle is a lounge area with a pool table. And so I wanted to play, I'm, you know, I, I play pool and shit. I get down, you know what I'm saying? So I want to go down and whip somebody's ass. I go down there, it's Wu Tang clan down that motherfucker. It's like 50 of them motherfuckers. It ain't just the Wu-Tang, like 10 of them. It's like 50 of them motherfuckers. And so they all down there, and, and they, yo, can I get in, dog? Dog, oh, oh, this nigga ain't from New York. You know, he ain't, I ain't hit him with the sun. You know what I'm saying? They looking at me. They said, where you from? I'm like, where you from, son? I'm like, yo, I'm from L.A., West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Is that right? You can see everybody's like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit. I feel like a nigga at a Klux Klan bar or some shit. Yeah, I looked yeah. at me crazy. I was like, oh, shit. I said, you know what? I'll be right back. <laughs> I left that month. You left, I was like, whoa. So you knew the temperature was different. I said, oh, I'm cool, man. I ain't going back down there. Hell no. So, <laughs> so you moved different crazy. after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in New York, yeah. What was crazy about New York, you know, they gang bang too out there. And I was out there like, fuck it. I was wearing red chucks and red. Like this shit you can't wear in L.A. I was Flamed up, red shirt, everything. That's crazy. And then there's bloods out there set tripping on me. I was like, damn. But I, I, I don't think. And then I was down with the West Side Connection with Cube and everybody. I'm playing on the records and I'm with them. And we West Coast didn't get any respect as rappers. They thought we were country slow, blah 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 blah. And so we were mad, like we gangsters. You don't talk crazy about us. We beat your ass. You know what I'm saying? So that I think the disrespect on that level is with the West Coast, East Coast. I think was. That's so much territory. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think the West Coast, East Coast was just respect of, of rap, rap uh, skills. I don't, I don't think, you know, if I went through Brooklyn, I would get beat up just because mm -hmm. I'm from L.A. And I don't think somebody from Brooklyn would get beat up because they're going through Compton or down Crenshaw. I got to jump into something real quick. Um, fast forward. And because I know people who go through this situation all the time, right? And I'm trying to figure out, um, have you ever had this situation? Since it's Valentine's Day. Uh, have you ever had, um, were heartbroken? Were you, have you ever had to walk in on a situation where you saw something that you didn't like? And, um, or did anybody ever walk in on you in a situation where? Um, I heard about this girl, Elle, I want to say Ella, what was her name? I think. I know. I, I asked her. I asked Mama, her. Oh, can you ask her? I'm beating your ass. Like, you I, heard about, I heard about that. God damn. <laughs> My old brother's history out, man. What's I heard, wrong you heard about that. You know, let us in on that little old. Yeah, that's what, what I'm trying to get yeah. to. 
Yeah, what the girl, yeah, you was young. What young. did you this do? Young, you and young. why did you do that to her? You cheated. <laughs> I never cheated. Well, then what, what did you do? I never cheated on nobody. That's not what I heard. But keep going. Ella. Tell me the story. I heard he was, somebody yeah, he walked in. He couldn't think of a name, really. He was. He I was heard really somebody tough. walked in and caught you in a certain compromising position with somebody else. Yeah, I never cheated on somebody, and See, I never and had nobody. And got caught. You was young, man. Tell the so truth. No female came home. And caught that, you. No, it wasn't at home. It was at his house. At his, at your, yeah, I think it may have been a daddy at called. A daddy it. House. Your dad might have called. Oh, oh, oh. That's okay. what it was. That wouldn't cheat. That's what. <laughs> why? Why? That yeah, that's cheating. it. That Kayla. was it. Hi, Kayla. <laughs> so what happened? So my dad. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> my dad get mad at you. Remind him of this shit. So he has this coming of age thing. And so my dad's like, I want you to experience drinking with me and and talking about sex with me first so I can teach you some shit, right? Mm-hmm. So you invite all his partners over and he sits with me with a bottle of Jack Daniels, right? And he has a cup he, and I have a cup. He said, you got to drink whatever, whenever I drink, you got to drink. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. And he, he played his game. So you ready? He, he take a sip, I take a sip. Mm-hmm. And then somebody said, yeah, Clint, when you get older, I'm doing like this, he's filling up my cup. <laughs> And then I look back there and say, all right, take a sip. He take a sip, and I take it. I look, somebody else say something, and he feel a cup like, I'm fading like a motherfucker. <laughs> and so he's all right, um, we're going we're gonna to watch, teach you about sex. So he take me in his room. His room is the only room at the house that had a VCR. Mm-hmm. So he go in this bedroom, and all his partners go in there, and they put in Vanessa Del Rio. She getting down, so she says, that's called head, and this is called this, that, and this, blah, 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 When you hit a girl, do it like you this. you do it. Yeah, it's just, you do it like that, and you do, make sure when you hit it, you hit it like that, and man, and they telling all kinds of stories. You know, my, your brother was born when I was hitting your mama like this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, wow. And so he, so they, they trying to, you know, educate me on sex and shit, right? So I end up throwing up and passing out and all that type of stuff. Drug. So the next day was um, the street scene in L.A., and so they block off hella streets in LA and they have stages and people perform Stevie Wonder and shit like that. So you walk, it's marts, it's food, it's shit to buy, whatever, right? So I'm faded, but I knew they was going to the to the thing, right? I'm thinking I got alcohol and a porn tape. I'm calling my girlfriend. <laughs> so my dad's like, come on, let's go to the thing. I was like, oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Lying like a motherfucker. You been saying like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Dad, can I just lay here? He's like, all right, yeah, all right. So you probably got a hangover. Like, yeah, yeah, I got a hangover. He's like, all right, we'll be back. He left. I got on the phone. Hey, baby, get your mama. We, I'm, I had to be like 14 or 15. 15 mm-hmm. probably, almost 16. I didn't have a driver's license. Hey, get your mama to drop you off over here right now. I said, I got <laughs> alcohol and four tape. Yeah. And so she come over hella quick. Uh, we start drinking and shit. I'm mean, getting fade. You know, you're young. Your little right. hormones get to go on. So we go in the room. We start watching porn. So we in my dad's. We sitting in my dad's room. We in his bedroom. We sitting on his bed watching Vanessa Del Rio. Right, drunk. After a while, we just start kissing and shit. I got up under on his side of the bed, and we got butt naked and got the freaking. You know what I'm saying? So I'm knocking it out. All of a sudden, they came back. <laughs> <laughs> and so the um, his wife at the time was like. Somebody in here. I said, girl, I smell perfume. She running through the house. There's only a two-bedroom thing. She running in the room. Running in the room. Bedroom slid. Like, hey, get out. You know, get out of the bed. I was like, oh, shit. We better put in the covers butt naked. You know oh, what I'm yeah. Um, Right before, I'm, I'm skipping. Right before that, I'm hitting it. And, oh, I didn't do a uh, shot in the bed. And then ah, they came to the door. Oh, you made a mess. <laughs> they came to the door, right? That's when they came in and they busted and shit. And that's when Kenata was with them. Yeah, yeah. He said, Kenata, come on, look at your brother. I'm like, <laughs> under the covers and shit. Kenata's like, oh, y'all nigga. <laughs> he walked up to the bed, about to pull the covers. Pull the covers. I said, nigga, if you don't get back in this bed, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> he backed up. And I said, y'all get the hell out of here. And the girl's all embarrassed. She's crying. I'm like, yeah. So then um, they left, let us get dressed, right? And the girl was all embarrassed. So she ran out the, it was a condo, ran out the condo, went downstairs. It's like late at night now, like eight. And she's running down the street. We can't find her and shit. So I run down the street looking for her. And then I find her and walk her back and calm her down. And my dad, he came downstairs to, you know, he's like, proud, like, all right, son, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this girl was thick, you know what I'm saying? He was like, all right, boy. He, he, so it was like a father, son, little moment. He's like, man, I know you was having sex, brother. 
<laughs> my son, all right. You know how to pick them too. He was like, all right, next time, you know, I get you a room, some condoms, so you don't get a girl pregnant, you know. But yeah, I'm glad you know what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, you, you with that, you with that life. He was like, oh, okay. So I want to take you and your girlfriend. Your girlfriend, I want to take her back home and whatever, whatever. So, you proud of it? Yeah, yeah. So you're like, ah, oh, son, you know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> so we dropped the girl off and stuff, and then we, you know. What did the stepmama have to say? She, she was crazy. That girl left the house and went and told the mom before oh, we yeah. dropped the girl off. No. The girl, got, the girl got out the car, the mama went Living. after her. Yeah. Right. Chased her through the house and beat her up, you know what I'm saying? Whooped her, like, wow. embarrassed. Man. I didn't find out until, like, later. Mm. So, look, so we talking and we in the car. He's like, yeah, son, you know, I'm glad you like girls. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We really got to worry about that shit now. He's like, I don't think you, I like, you like girls. You hit it. He was hitting it. Did you do what I was telling you? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, all right, all right. So we get in the, in the condo. It's all late. Lights off. I guess the wife is in the bed, right? So my dad walks me to my room. He says, all right, son. I'm glad we had this moment. Father and son, right? He goes, oh, I love you. I said, I love you too, dad. He's like, all right. And they went to the room, remember? He was on his side of the bed. And then about two minutes later, he was like, go ahead! He like, what? He laid right in his damn! And beat my ass. Oh my God. No, man, man, that's man. hard, man. <laughs> listen, listen. In the man. cold part, you sleep naked? He <laughs> <laughs> laid right in it, very bad. Man. Oh, man. So, man, but those are memories, man. So I wouldn't know. cheat, man. And all the girls, you know. Yeah, he wouldn't cheat. That wouldn't mean, because I tell him, I don't yeah. cheat. No, don't. So, so, like, when, when you think about just coming up in LA, I'm going to get back into my stories. Um, you know, going on that West Side Connect, you know. Um, Ice Cube, you know, I always like to bring him up. Uh, the big three and all the stuff that you guys did together, man. What was one of the things that stick out to something that he related to you that, that you kind of take down memory lane every time you're doing business? Oh, he told me uh, the reason why I, I'm here doing what I do still is because he told me, he, him and his brother named Shorty, um, at, Shorty was from the lynch mob. He passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Shorty and him would put me in the corner and, and just drill me with 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 black history to give it gives you confidence as a black right. man that you can right. achieve anything. He said we can invent it, um, history with the hieroglyphics and we 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 built the pyramids and he would just they would just drop bombs on me. We did air conditioning. We invented this. That, that, that. I was like, damn, for real. But he said anything you. The only thing that sets you different from anybody doing anything is what they know. Wow. If you know what they know, you can do what they do. That's all. That's true. And I was like, oh, shit. So that's why now I engineer my own sessions. I play all the instruments. I do it because I said, man, I just want to learn whatever. And, I, and anything I get into, now I'm in the TV and film. Now I know the directors. I know all what they do. And I know how to shoot and, and, and lo do locations and scout and casting and everything. So he, he him saying that, and I told him that, that recently. That uh, you know, you if the only thing that sets you different from anybody out there that's doing anything is what they know. If you learn what they know, you can do what they do. You want to be an astronaut, learn how to be an astronaut. You can fly a spaceship. You know, you know uh, something. I was, I was just interviewing Alonzo uh, Williams, mm -hmm. and he was telling me that out of all, out of Dr. Dre, out of Ren, out of DJ Yella, uh, out of all the NWA, the only one that really just keeps showing him homage. And showing him love is Ice Cube. Ice he always right. show him respect. He always say that uh, Alonzo don't get the just do that he feel he deserved because if it wasn't for him, you right. know, it wouldn't be no NWA. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So how did you see Alonzo when you seen that whole movement happening? Because um, he had, uh, you didn't go to that club, did you? <laughs> Eve after dog? Yeah. What? Give me an Eve after dog story, man. I, I ain't got no story. Yeah, I, I hear that. about all them girls that used to be there. Well, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You, he, he, he know he, he ain't going to tell us that none of the day. No, I, I think I went once or twice. But it was, it yeah, was, but was, was that your 16. side of town, though? I was, no, 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 no. That's Compton. That's way. So that wasn't your side of town? No, I'm, I'm Crenshaw. So, so how you end Crenshaw up over there? Hey, you in L.A. You hear about the shit, you go check it out. Wow, wow. Was it everything that they, they hyped it up to be? I mean, it was cracking. It was like, for the younger crowd, it was, it was we didn't promote our own stuff, so it was nowhere to really go until you got like 21 or older or whatever, but you, everybody was going there. It was cracking. What about, uh, so Dr. Dre, I don't know if he was there at the time when you, you know, DJ, you know, they had the, uh, the whole. He was, probably, he was probably there. He was <laughs> probably there. Real talk. That's when, I, that's when I went, when it was popping, popping. Yeah, yeah, because they had the. Uh, 
the record uh, they had that wrecking crew and turn off the lights mm -hmm. you know and 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 my girl miss la something before you turn off the lights yeah go on, yeah right. see you know produced by my man. homeboy layla man layla just, produced that who, and wrote it who just no lonzo said he wrote that not the lyrics. Yes, he did. Did he wrote the lyrics? Okay, well, then, then Layla did the music. Layla did the music. With Dre. Cause, cause, well, they probably collabed because all of them was over there together, man. Yep. And people don't understand that. He say his house was the closest thing to house party. You, like, everybody, you would be amazed at the people that was there because they wasn't the people who they are today. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So I think that's fly as ever. Um, but He's he, a legend, man. Yeah. He, he set it off. He did, man, and that's it. Thank God for him. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at just the whole movement on your side of town, who are some of those people that stick out over there where you was at that was during that time that he ended up blowing up crazy outside of yourself, as far as on your side of town? Um, my homeboy Pockets. Okay, he, he did Bonnie and Clyde. For okay, Yo -Yo. yeah. Yo Yo blew up. Um, Cam blew up. So Yo Yo was from your side of town. Yeah, she was. Uh, well, not so much my side of town like Normandy and Century. Okay, well, okay. that's that's not too far though. Um, Dom Kennedy. Okay, I used to, him and his, he had a group called uh, Ten West. Okay, and they were very just just starting to have beats. They have nothing. They would we had a studio and they would come rent the studio, and I would, and I saw talent in him and I tried to get him in on, on a um, Subway commercial. Really he did it, but it was some reason they they didn't like the. What we were talking about, the way we did it, it was some some little small thing we could have fixed, but they, they didn't tell us. They went to somebody else real quick. Wow! But the subway, everybody, in mama was probably tur turning something in. Yeah, but, yeah. But ne you know, but he was he was tight back then. He was, and it was like the nineties, the early nineties. He was, he was tight back then. So your your era, you you got Don Cornelius doing Soul Train out here. Give me, did you ever run into those discords, the ones who was dancing on the show? Oh, yeah. They were homies. Okay, so give me a... I mean, we interviewed Alex Thomas, and he showed That's up. That's my boy. This boy showed us. I went back and looked, man. He was he put the letters together on the board. Mm -hmm. He had a box, and he come yep. through doing his thing, man. But he was one of those guys, and I was like, man, you never knew that Don Cornelius was working with people who... Turned out later Turned on out to be great stars, stars comedians. Mm -hmm. Who was another one that sticks out? Do you know anybody else that? Yeah, uh, the Good Girls. Remember that? Okay. That song? No weakness. So it was uh, Joyce Scott, uh, Joyce, and um, Demonica. Okay. I forgot the name of that group. She gonna kill me. <laughs> but they had a dance group, and my sister had a dance group, and they used to battle all the time. So really? I, yeah, I've been knowing Joyce and them for the longest. But it was Farsi. I mean, um, Bowlegged Lou. It was a whole bunch of them. Just like celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see him on Soul Train, and you see him at the club. Yeah, that had to be hard. Yeah, and we're like, oh, yeah, see, he was on Soul Train. He's like, you know, they pop, they call What us. about uh, um, when you think about just during that, that whole time, you, going from the disco era into hip-hop, mm -hmm. you know, how, how tough was that transition? I always tell people, I say, man, we took our parents from, uh, in the South, we took our parents from, uh, uh, whether it be, it could be something as simple as, uh, Teddy Pentagrass, or it could be something as Stephanie Mills, or it could be Luther. Mm -hmm. To hey, we want some. Oh, say. Right. Or we took them. To, I was told not long ago, too short, don't stop right. that rap. Mm -hmm. or, or or either either Ice Cube, Jack and Beach. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. this was a whole different. Bitch, all, you, uh, bitch come, is the bitch. All that, like they never. We that's a whole hard transition if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yep. Yep. It, it was, we were exploited back then. Um, we're exploited now. It's like uh, these Jewish companies that say that's shock value. What are you saying? Oh, that's crazy. We put it out. Regardless of how it was going to affect us. Wow. They wouldn't put out a Jewish kid saying, hey, yeah, yarmulke is a yarmulke or whatever. You know what I'm uh -uh. saying? They ain't going to do that, but they'll do that with us. So they were just like, all right, who else got something shock? And you'd be thinking, oh, I got to go to the studio. I got to say something crazy. So at that time, everybody was saying something crazy. So when the F the Police came out, did you what did you think about that when NWA had had dropped that? Um, Q, when he f the NWA that whole record and hearing Q's voice because he's mad, he's you know you see his face, he just looks like one of them crazy ass LA niggas with a Jerry curl that had just bust. But he's he's giving you a picture of what everybody's going through. So I felt what he's saying. I'm getting jacked up by the police. I got four or five stories of me getting jacked up, bunk, Give us a story. What happened? All Give that us the shit worst for one. nothing. The worst one. Man, I was, they're all bad. Um, but 
the it's who was the first one? I'll give you the second one. Okay. Just to show how off the hook fucking uh, LA was. And so it was the day of my prom. So I'm I'm the prom age, was 16, 17. So I went to the cleaners, picked up my little dry cleaning for mm -hmm. the for the after party and shit. I'm gonna pick up my tuxedo okay. from the Fox Hill Mall. My hey. baby, right. So I, the the cleaners right next to the gas station. So I, I had a little Nissan Maxima, you know what I'm saying? So I, I pulled in the gas station. This before pay at the pumps. You gotta go inside, pay a little money mm -hmm. for the, whatever. So I'm trying to fill up for the day. I'm pumping gas. I have a flat top. I got a members only jacket on. I got your bow jeans. I'm a fly nigga. You know what I'm saying? The cops uh, look at me, mad dog. Me and the next thing you know, they pulling the the driveway of the gas station. I'm pumping gas. The motherfuckers pulled up on me, jumped out the car with guns. I'm like, put your hands in the air. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm like, oh shit. You know what the fuck? Turn around. The, the felony take down. They interlock your fingers and put them behind your head and walk back to the car. And they both pointing the gun at you until you get to the uh, back door. I'm, wow. like, oh, I'm 16. I'm like, oh shit. About to pee on myself. And they give me the car. Whose car is this? Where's your registration? And I didn't know the game. It's in the car. We had the right to go in your car. I was like, yeah. Thinking they're going to just get the registration. The motherfucker searched my shit. Got the throwing shit out. Mm -hmm. Like, disrespectfully as a motherfucker. Wow. Threw my cleaning out. Basketballs. My little cassettes. You know what I'm saying? With a little weak-ass case. They breaking and shit. I'm like, hey, what the fuck you doing? I'm cuffed. Shut the fuck up. Another one hit me with a chest with, with a belly club. Shut the fuck uh -huh. up. I'm like, man, what the hell? He gets the, the registration. My mom was terrified. I bet. Of me have, driving my, being in the streets because of the police. Not because of the Crips and Bloods, but because of the police. police. And so she had uh, photocopied my driver's license, insurance, registration, put them in a Ziploc bag. So they wow. protected. They had no excuse, you know what I'm saying? They were, uh, protected from getting wet. So then they checked everything, nothing came back, and they were like, ah. Oh. He looked at his friend and was like, he ain't nothing. got nothing. He ain't got nothing. He let me go. Then they threatened me. Yeah, you lucky we don't empire in your car, get your shit out of here. And I wanted to talk shit and, what's your name? You know, all that type of shit. But when he said that, I'm like, I need my car for the after prom. So I didn't know what the fuck's going to happen. So I just let him go. Wow. So I'm on Crenshaw. Anybody know LA? I'm on Crenshaw and Adams. So I'm going south on Crenshaw to Slauson and then going to the Fox Hill Mall. So I get near the Crenshaw Wall. So that's like 40 blocks down. Another motorcycle cop pulls me over. Asks and this me was the, got the same car. day. Same day. Right after that. I just finished pumping gas. I'm going down the street. Ten minutes later, a motherfucking motorcycle cop pulls up on me, tells me get out the car and all that shit at gunpoint. Sit on the car. They talk Stuff to crazy like this stuff. is why some black folks would just do something hey, crazy. Right. So I'm Because like, of that. So I sit down. I'm like, what the fuck? And he said, you look too young to be driving the car. Let me see your ID. Da, da, da. Everything is in a Ziploc bag. I ain't even put the shit up. The shit's on the front seat. Here, it's in the front seat. And he looks at it. Okay, you just look too young. That's you. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I said, man, will you talk to y'all motherfuckers talk? I said, God damn, this is the second time, man. Fuck right with y'all. He punt guns at me and shit like that shit on Boys in the Hood. Yeah, that's Cuba exactly what I was thinking about. That's three times in one day. So this is the third time. So and these are all white cops that are stopping. Black, black. It, it no, it's white. white. The first one was white. The one, the second one was black. And the third one was black. It was white and black cop. So I get back in the car. And so that's, it was like 46th Street. So around 59th is where Slauson is at. <clears throat> and so, and this is so ironic. So I... I I'm, I'm at Crenshaw about to make a right, and I look in my mirror, I see a police car flying through traffic with his lights off. I said, he must be after somebody, so let me get out of his way. And so I make a right, this motherfucker fly right up on my bumper, hit the lights, turn, pull over. I pulled over directly across the street from Marathon, from Nipsey Hustle store, right in front of the, the Winnie Snizzle. I mean, yeah, the, win the Winnie Snizzle. So he asked me to get out the car, I'm mad as fuck. I look just like Cuba Gooding did when when he got home after the gun put, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, cop yeah. put the gun to his face and, and Neil Long was like, what's mm -hmm. my mind? He was like, man, mother. I got the car. Just feeling, I cried when I see that scene. I got wow. the car feeling, I was crying just like, I'm tired of you motherfuckers, man. Pulling me off over the fucking gunpoint. What the fuck you gonna do, man, God damn it. I still had my uh, Ziploc bag. I ain't put it, I ain't put the motherfucker down yet. So it was in my life. the third life. time you been stopped. The third time within five minutes. Within five minutes, within, mi within minutes, minutes, just. I ain't put it down yet, let alone put it in the glove compartment after the second car. They must have planned it. No. No, nah, so I pulled over, it was got bad. out of the car, I put it on the on the roof of the car, and the dude's like, damn, he's like, all right, you just, you just look too young to be trying to be cool. It's all right, we ain't gonna do nothing. I said, man, fuck y'all. Y'all talk, man. I'm like, I'm mad as fuck, my hand on the roof of the car. Man, look at the shit he looked at. He said, you good, you good. I said, man, if I get pulled over one more motherfucking time, man, I'm tired of you motherfuckers, man. I'm crying and shit, shit, motherfucker. I bet. I'm 16 years old. I had guns put. Seven, eight guns put me in that, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, motherfucker. Do you think that the Rodney King incident helped or hurt? 
Do I think it helped? It didn't do shit. You don't think so? Hell no. See, my dad's a, a, a civil rights attorney, so I've been hearing about shit, um, uh, police abuse, man, for you. Since the 60s, he's been telling me, yeah, when you was born in 68, this happened and that happened. He got a thousand stories. So then we, we thinking, okay, well, finally we had a shit on tape. Now they can't dispute that shit. And they still got off. Mm -hmm. So when, when they got off that day, when the, when the city erupted, what did you, where were you at? Were you looting? Uh, no, nah, I was, actually I was with Ice Cube. Where were you, where were you guys at? We were at the studio at Echo Sound. About to do something, and we stopped to watch the verdict. And we watching the verdict, and they said, not guilty, not guilty. Q looked at me, he said, man, they better tear this motherfucker up. He said, man, I'm going home. Wow. I'm like, fuck this session, it's over, let's go home. Go home. I was like, all right. So I went home and shit, I'm sitting there watching the shit, and I'm seeing Reginald Denny get beat up, and, and then I'm looking outside, I'm seeing smoke everywhere, I'm like, oh shit. I said, man, let me just, I don't know what the cops was gonna do. So I was like, cause they get away with murder. And so I was like, I'm gonna stay my ass here. Eventually, I did go loot. <laughs> not, the first, not the first day, though. I was like, is it cool? Y'all get away with shit? Like, one niggas was stealing U-Haul trucks and then rolling up to Circuit City and snatching TVs. Snatching TVs. <laughs> hey, everybody was getting everybody, crazy. Everybody was getting cracking. Video man. cameras, everything, man. I went out and got a little something. So what did, what did you think when, uh, when, when uh, Tupac uh, actually came and when he came to death row? And, and and that whole movement of him getting out of prison, because I was like, did Jimmy Iovine get him out? I know I'm hearing, I heard that you know both of them they collectively got him out, but to see him come to the West Coast and them drop uh, California Love and, mm -hmm. and 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 come out hard like they did with two different videos, I think mm -hmm. it was two different videos. Um, yeah, he did the remix. Layla did what, the remix. Yeah, what did you think about that? I I I, I thought uh, I worked with Tupac before all that. Oh, oh, you Digital Underground. I played, no, nah, he was... Um, Me Against the World. Right, around that time. Right, right that after time. that album. Okay. He had um, Thug Life. Yeah, 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 sure did. And so I played, so he would be at Echo Sound, I ended up playing bass for uh, for a couple of songs. But he would, he would, uh, he's, he's, he, that dude is, he's ridiculously talented. He's probably the most talented rapper, period, ever. Because he'll, he'll, He'd be like, all right, what's the, what's, the, what's the song about? All right, and go in there and lay that shit. And then double it, do exactly like how he just did it, because he just wrote it. Them songs you hear, he probably did it in like five minutes. I was like, God, he would this fool, he's a fool. And he'd just be like, I'm done, I'm gone, see y'all niggas later. He'll pin it that fast and be out. He did a verse for uh, E-40. I was in the studio and I was playing Miss Pac-Man. So I, I was on the first level, boop, boop, doo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. He walked past me and I was like, oh shit. I said, well, let me finish this game. I'm thinking he's gonna be there for a minute. I'll, I'll catch up with them niggas later. I probably got to the, the blue level yeah. and he was done walking out. And Ooh. I thought he was just going to the car and he forgot something. He couldn't have been done that fast. And everybody's in there going, God damn, oh shit, you hear that shit? Oh God damn. I was like, what the fuck? I ran in there. They're like, damn, and they play that shit. I was like, damn, and nigga lay this shit already? You see, he wrote that shit right in my face. Forty was tripping. He, and he lived. wrote that shit and got on. He gone. I see, he left. I was like, damn, it had been five, ten minutes. Wow. So you dealt with He's stupid, man. man. But, but I think the the one other part that 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 it was his demise, Suge, I was fucking with Suge in the nineties. I've been mean, fucking with Suge, Big West. A lot of it's a lot of gangsters who was who was going around now they got money too. They feel like they got power and they got all this influence. I get everybody down to do whatever to be with him. That they just monsters. So he would a mon. He was the biggest monster. He was Shug. He was the biggest monster with all this money, death row, and he got all the hitters from fresh out of jail, his homies and shit. He was just like they just do anything, talk crazy and everything. So they pump uh, Tupac up because Tupac quiet. Tupac ain't he the was quiet. He ain't the, the, the dude you saw like when he came out of jail. He quiet. If, you, if he was here, he'd be in the corner somewhere. He's he's chill. I've always seen him in clubs. After I play bass, we kind of knew each other, you know what I'm saying? And I, he did, um, uh, what's his movie he did? Uh, uh, Gridlock? No, nah, he, he was Bishop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I got CRS, you know what I'm saying? 
Bishop, you know, uh, the one... Uh, he was the killer. He was, he was the killer. killer he was Bishop on there. The first movie, he did the one when, that... When Omar, uh, what's that one Omar that Epps. Omar Epps was in there? But what's the name? He said he... he uh, uh, Juice. 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 So, Juice just came out. He didn't even know Shug. I know Shug. I knew Tupac. Them niggas was not talking to each other. They didn't know each other. And, and, and at that time. But Shug was a super monster, you know what I'm saying? But Tupac was quiet off in the cut. Nobody knew who Tupac was like that. Wow. And so he just in the cut. He had his little bright orange and everything, but he just laid off in so the you cut. So he they, was cool. Were, so were they around each other during that time? They didn't even... In the same area. Okay. But they, it was like one of those um, uh, Jack the Rappers or yeah, some kind yeah. of music convention. Uh, I knew who everybody was, but he didn't know Shug. You know what I'm saying? But he was quiet. My point is, when he did get to know Shug and he did get out of jail, now he's out here... Turning up, man, we fucking these motherfuckers up, and we just that and the other. You know what I'm saying? That's how he got involved with a, a boy um, who snatched uh, Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. They whooped his ass because he 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 snatched somebody's chain or something like Tried that. Tried to Tupac say, was like, oh, we going you know what I'm saying? We gonna beat him up." And that wasn't Tupac like that. You know what I'm saying? Not that far as I know. I don't. I ain't gonna say like I know him, know him like that. Well, it's hard for me to say that because he did shoot. Two undercover cops before this. Yeah, he ain't no punk, but he wouldn't go around. He just, wasn't just looking for looking, the problem. Looking for the problem, right? That yeah. part. Yeah. He wasn't no punk. He had no punk in him, but he he wasn't the type. I don't think. And I think in that environment, because even Snoop, Snoop, who's laid back, was like, yeah, nigga, fuck Uncle uh, uh, Luke, and yeah, nigga, and easy. But you talk to Snoop now, he he like, nigga, I love them niggas. Puffy, I love them niggas. But he had run with Death Row, and, had, and you got to kind of follow with Suge's on. And that's that L.A. shit. You know, you if I don't fuck with somebody, you don't fuck with So me. when Suge was doing, because uh, Suge was, was Suge, like, he rolled with the Pyrus and bumped him, wasn't he? Yeah. So what's the difference between the Pyrus and just the regular Bloods? Is it just the areas? Just the areas. The whole gang shit is just location. That's all it is. That's it. So when you think about the 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 Suge that was, that run, because they say he played sports early on. He was playing for Las Vegas. For, uh, so that Suge was more of a conservative, just playing ball. He wasn't banging then. He, I don't, I don't, I met Suge at the beginning. He was doing security for my homeboy Wes, who was like my first manager. And so Wes was doing this super fest. Um, and he was head of security, so he would hire Suge. Yeah. And so Suge, me and Suge would have to roll together to get into the super fest together. Wow. So I was with Suge all the time. He was a big motherfucker. Um, what was those conversations like? Shug was like, Shug, to me, um, he, to me, he, he's bipolar. Because he can be super nice. He like, oh, y'all, y'all family, come on, man, come on to my house. Or if you happen to be in the mall, you want to watch? You want a Rolex? Or you want to eat? I'm treating all y'all. Y'all, y'all, come on. He's super cool. Is your mama? Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I want to eat. A Rolex I'm watch? Eating is different, but a Rolex watch? Shug is super Cool. And then money. But he can flip. He'll That's flip. That's why on. I got it backed up. He, you've seen him flip? I've seen him flip. What, seen, when did you see him flip? A bunch of times. When? Oh, Give me an instance. Ooh. So, look, it's funny. You, you I interviewed DLC. So yeah, I, I just hanging, interviewed DLC. I was yeah. hanging with, so he was managing DLC. Yeah, he was. So, me, DLC, and Suge would hang out at clubs. And so, it was the palace. It was public enemy performing. And so, he said, meet me up at the palace. We, we go, I'll get y'all. That's what Suge said. I'll get y'all in. So I get up there first, and security's like, yeah, man, uh, we ain't gonna let this person in, this person in, this person, or Suge. So then Suge and then DLC rolled up, and, they, and, and DLC's a samurai. So they parked. I went over there, I said, hey, man, these niggas talking about they ain't gonna let you in. Wow. And so we went around to the backstage, and then Suge was trying to get in. He was like, nah, we was told, we was told not to get you in. Suge like, I'm on the list, boop, 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 boop. He said, we gotta go to the front. So me, DLC, and Suge walked to the front. There's some big country, swole, buff, body good looking nigga in a suit. So he's talking to the guy with the list. And the guy with the list is telling him, you know, you're not on the list, bro. You know, go on so I can, you know, get whatever. And so he catches Suge's eye. So Suge is like, hey. So he's trying to talk to Suge. So Suge was like, excuse me. Dude's like, get back, don't touch me. I was like, oh shit. Suge said, hey man, I'm, I'm on the list, man, watch out. Nigga said, you watch out. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Choked him out. <laughs> Beat this big butt motherfucker up. Just whooped his ass. Beat him right like, there. Oh shit. And kept stomping him. Like dude's down on the ground. He just, oh, we had to. Yeah, me and DOC ain't that big. We can't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's, what, what, what club was that? 
the palace. That was the palace. The palace on Vine near Hollywood. And he stomped out. He stomped, stomped him out. Him out. Oh. But all y'all tall. You tall. DLC no, tall. Y'all could have hold huh? him and pull him off. We trying. We trying. Shook big as hell. Shook big. How big He's is Shook? He's 6'4". I was in the He was a lineman. Yeah. yeah. Imagine okay. the big old dudes playing football. He was a lineman. He was big as hell. And yeah. strong. He daily mm -hmm. plays all his time. So he stomped so he him out. Solid. Stomped him out. What did the other guys do? They they didn't do nothing. I mean, everybody looking scared. I mean, you ain't gonna stop Suge. And Suge going, and this is a young Suge. Yeah, so he ain't trying. This to is hear. athlete. You know. So what he saying? just stopped because he wanted to stop. Yeah, it wasn't like y'all yeah. stopped him. But he stomped it. Did he? Like, yeah, he unnecessarily left, did you, stopped. He's like, down. Like nigga, you got him. Did y'all leave after that? They left after they that. Y'all didn't leave. Out. Police come after y'all. Uh, we left that quick. I don't know. So let me ask you this, and that was just the first time. Cause we and see, I, I see, see Shug will slip out. What, what, give me another instance on old Shug. I like listening to them old Shug stories anyway. Cause Shug, hey man, listen man, I don't know man. His whole movement is just, it's it's crazy. But everybody knows. I was at this hotel mm -hmm. when Shug walks in. I was at in the casino when the Kings own this. You remember when they own this? Mm -hmm. And everybody start whispering like they oh. They everybody start whispering. I believe it was me. Jay Prince was there that day. It, it was a, yeah, everybody. It was everybody was there. It was it was a time. This was in like probably two thousand and nine or ten, two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. This was before he had done beat the lady up on the strip. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was just right before that. Okay. And we all was we was all in that casino down there. Everybody used to come to the palm during this time. It was a kid down there named Jay. They used to run around meddling and messing with everything. They knew the owners of the. I was here, right mm -hmm. here, where I always come here. And so, basically, you could tell, even this was after death row, this was, that was over with, mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. But they still had that respect. And they still had that, mm -hmm. we don't know what he might do. Yep. So you been in those situations when that, that, that Suge was around too. That Suge was around. But I, I, I had, um, like Suge, uh, Dick Griffey, Wes Crockett, they they were schooling Suge, right? But they were like, if something jumped off, the muscle they gonna call it Suge. Suge come over and put hands on somebody, right? But he he like I said, he was just he would he would it's like a light switch. He could be laughing ha 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 ha, and then boom, what like a pit bull? Oh, and just, oh, what was and the second? Boom. What was the second place? Yeah, well, give me that second story. I got a bunch of stories, but yeah, let's go. One, one story. He was, I think it was Rainbow Records. It's a distribution company. So we, we was in Beverly Hills. We had just came from Archie Bunker, the actor. Was it just you and Shug at this point? Me, part? Shug, and, and some, DOC again or no? No, no, some other, some other kid, right? And so we went downstairs. Cause like, Shug's my age, you know what I'm saying? He's just a big nigga, but he's my age. So we, we went downstairs to this, this Archie Bunker had a restaurant and they races in there. And so they were looking at us like, get up out of there. And she just start ordering more shit. Like, fuck y'all, we're gonna stay here a little longer. Hey, give us more shit. And we would just, so he was just kind of like clowning and, and it seemed like in a good mood. And then we went upstairs. And so, uh, I can't remember the exact story, but I think uh, um, somebody asked Suge who promotes a club, you yeah. know, a DJ. So Suge referred to DJ. And, um, and then the DJ, I guess, did the club, but didn't get paid. And the DJ had some manager that thought he was hard. You know what I'm saying? So the next day, he's like, yo, your boy ain't paid paid my DJ. What's up? And he's like, Shook said, hey, man, I just referred to shit. Like, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Dude, was nah, you referred him. You got some, You got all to do with it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to break him off. Shook was like, I ain't breaking that nigga off. He didn't get paid. Y'all didn't handle your business. That's y'all business. Yo, is that right, nigga? Where you at? I'll come up there right now. Shook like, nigga, I'm at the woo, 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 woo. Bring your ass up here. And I'm like, oh, this nigga don't know who he's talking to. You know what I'm saying? So we sitting there in the sugar office laughing, playing music, whatever. And then it's like you get out the elevator. You come through a glass door. You get the, the, that Rainbow Records office. It's a big used office. They had a big reception area. Yeah. So I guess the dude came back, came there, and she was like, oh, that's, that's that nigga right here. She got a pistol on. So I'm sitting there like, oh, shit. What the fuck's about to go down? And I saw the dude through the, through the door. He was like a chubby dude. So I was like, he ain't. He's not a threat to Suge, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But then he, then he got up, started talking. You can see him. I couldn't hear shit. I just saw him doing this. Suge was like, uh-huh. He looked around, pulled out his pistol, and hit him with the butt of the pistol on his forehead. He fell on the ground. Boom! 
He just let him throw it. I was like, oh shit, ran over there and he beating his face in with his fucking gun. <laughs> and I had to like run back and then yeah. tackle shit to get him up off the motherfucker because he was on his knees just, just pounding, pounding. pounding his face with his gun. I was like, oh shit. And it was just like, damn, I hate to be on the other side of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow, that's crazy. So it's like you and Suge, y'all had a relationship where he knew you was you was home team. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I used to roll with him in his in his in his K five Bronco with the Kenwood pull out. You know, Suge was Suge was uh like I said, he was super cool. He he love you, he love you. But yeah. if he nigga, if you get on that wrong side, it's a wrap. You cannot stop that, brother. He on once. So I was like, so when Death Row got cracking. I was like, ooh, I can holler at shit and get work, you know what I'm saying? But then I'm hearing this fool got beat up, and that fool got beat up, this fool got beat up. I was like, nigga, you ain't finna be beating on me. I said, no, and I was working with Cube anyway. I said, I'm straight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool. I'll stay over there here and shit. Man, you, you mentioned that, the Gregory guy. Uh, what, what was his name? The one that was, actually, I heard he was a part owner of, of Death Row at first. Um... Was it? It was Gregory. It was him, Doc, and that guy you just mentioned. Because Wes Crockett. No, no. no Dick, um, well, you uh, just mentioned him earlier. Right, right. The owner of Solar. I can't. Uh, Dick Griffey. Griffey. Dick that's Griffey. him. Remember, that's the one. He was mm -hmm. a part owner. I didn't even know that. It was four ways. Him, Dre, uh, Suge, and that Griffey guy. It was. It was. It was I can't think of. And Doc. Yeah, DOC. DOC, yeah. it was. It, it showed yeah. DOC to be a part of it. But he too. said there might have been five, even five members. He mentioned there might have been five instead of four. Who, who's, I can't think of his, his name right now. The guy you who remember? put up the money who was in jail. Though. He said there might have been one more. Yeah, it was Harry O. It wasn't Harry O. It was Harry O. Harry right, so there might have been five. Cause but yeah, wow, that's crazy. So they were working out of Solar Records, and, and Dick Griffey got a big ass studio. That's what they did the Chronic album yeah. and that shit. And I guess yeah. he was letting them use, Dick Griffey was letting them use the studio to record. Like I said, he was grooming Suge. They were giving him all kind of game and shit, you know, how to get in. But Suge, you know, people don't get the credit that he deserved, but Suge was getting shit done. Albums had deadlines. Oh, the money proved it. And, and he would go through all the bureaucracy because they wouldn't really play West Coast Records on MTV and yeah. VH1 and stuff like that, right? Um, so we didn't know who Snoop was. Dre wasn't like a big rapper at the time, but you, you hear all the stuff, like, right? Yeah. So he, somehow he was making it happen. And so I, I played uh, bass on New York, New York. Yeah. Dog Pound, right? We did that song. They, we did that song, and maybe a week later, they shot the video. I knew when they shot the video, and then a week after that, it's on MTV. It takes a month. At least you get a radio a video done, you submit it, they gotta like it and look through it and this, that, and it takes like a month. It was like a few days later after they sent it, it's wow. on it's on air. But this was the first one. This wasn't the New York where they kicking the building down. Yeah, that that that's New York, New York. That's that video. That video. That video. They had it on that fan. They had they I mean, um DJ Pooh did the beat. He also shot the video. So I'm knowing Pooh. You know what I'm saying? So he, they just got, we just got back from New York. They were shooting at him and everything. Like, Big was on the radio. Like, these West Coast niggas out here shooting a video in our, in our city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And somebody went and shot it. He telling me that whole story. And a few days later, that video was on, on what you call it? It's on it's on. What did MTV. you think when you seen the video? I, I thought the video was dope. I thought it kicked the builder down. Like, like, if anybody knows DJ Pooh, he's like George Jetson. He's always looking for the next. So that, that has special effects. They yeah, yeah. buildings and everything. That, nobody did that before. You know what I'm saying? DJ Pooh started the Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, yeah. In, I don't, you know, I didn't know that. Star. Yeah, that's his. That's thing. hard. That's him. So you know he's papered up, man. Yeah, he papered up. So but, when when that building mm -hmm. when they when they dropped the they kicking the building out Snoop, mm -hmm. uh, corrupt and yep. Daz. We were just snooping corrupt. Was that on? Yeah, they yeah, was Daz. all on that. They was on there acting up. Yep. Like and 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 this really this. It was like throwing gas on a fire. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you mess with us. We don't play that. You get to talking crazy. We don't care. We gang bang. We gang bang. We love retaliation. That's what gang bang is all about. They hit me, I'm going to hit them. They hit me. That's all gang bang is about. So we was gang banging. Man, I'm going to fast forward because I know you was around during this era as well because this is another thing that had to do with Suge was around during this time. Uh, a lot of people say this and that about it. The day when Biggie came and... Uh, got killed here after Pac had passed away. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a song, uh, he's going, going back, back to Cali. And Melvin Farmer say that on the streets of Cali, it was saying, people saying to get killed, to get killed, to get killed if he come down here. You know, what 
when you knew he was coming up here or whatever, did you feel like there would be tension for him coming to California, or did you feel like it's a it's a it's okay, it's not a no fly zone, it would be all right if he just come and perform, and then you know he would be good to go back. How did Clint Payback Sands look at it from the time when you knew Biggie was coming? You know, he it was word to Biggie coming to Cali. Mm -hmm. Pac is dead. Yep. What did you think? I thought he was stupid as fuck, and the whole uh, uh, bad boy team is stupid as a motherfucker. Because before all that shit, um, Biggie had issues with E40, and he was out. I in the didn't bay. know that. He was out in the bay. Looked that up. He was out in the bay, and E40 almost had him jump. So he had tension already coming to the West Coast, and these niggas is gangsters. You have dudes have nothing to do with the music business will kill. Biggie, anybody from the West. Oh, we don't like him cuz, what's happening, blood? We beat them little 17 year old knucklehead niggas. They'll bust on him. Nigga, stay, he on the radio station. Hey, I love LA, uh, we don't give a fuck about that shit. We'll kill you, nigga. And Tupac did? He had a target on his motherfucking head. I was like, oh, this nigga stupid. He on the radio station, letting everybody know he out here? He just put a target on his head. I was like, dog, he need to get the fuck out of here. He don't know what he's dealing with, cuz everybody think they look at the beach and they look at TV and they see Tom Cruise and Movie stars, it's safe. No, it ain't a it's bunch of safe. ignorant motherfucking killers out here for no reason at all. That would wow. knock your head off, and that's what that's what I think. That's what I thought happened. Yeah, it, it looks like the police did it. It's a couple of different and, situations. But I felt like when he was on the radio, I said, "Dog, like, he is stupid as hell. He don't know what he's dealing with, man." You he thought it was, he thought it was shit. sweet. He yeah. thought it was cool. You can't come out of that. I don't give a fuck how much security you got. This mo nigga, it'll be thirty motherfucking crips with guns. So it was crazy for him to even. It was think. stupid, nigga. You playing with you doing? But I, I like I said, he. They don't know what they was dealing with. You, you can't come to L. A. Well, you still can't come to L. A. On that bullshit with that little rapper that got killed at the Roscoe. I was about to ask you about that. P. M. B. Rock. You, you can't come out. So, but in, in cases like that, would you positively say that anybody can get got with the right amount of money behind the? Yeah. Can anybody like? There's nobody that's safe. Anybody Hell can no. get got with the right amount of money set up. Not even the money. It's just you come across the wrong person, mm -hmm. you have the little knuckleheads down to shoot you for free. They ain't gonna, mm. they don't want nothing. Wow. It ain't about no money. It's, it's loyalty. It's everything else. That dude did something to me. Oh, I got you, homie. I, you got to be careful, man. Mm. Man, I try so. not to diss nobody because that person that I'm dissing might not be mad, but his homie might be mad when it prove himself to his friend and do something to me. Oh, man. That's, mm. So how, I thought Biggie how, was stupid as hell. How <laughs> the check-in thing. The wait a minute, wait a minute. You, we got to talk about this because it's a lot of people I've had on the show and I've been asking them about checking in. Um, basically, uh, some people feel like check-in is appropriate. Others feel like it's exploiting certain situations. Some people say um, that nobody of the other people that don't look like us are not checking in. What is the situation with check-in for you on the West Coast with people that's coming into these areas and them just basically exploring the areas and going anywhere and doing anything? What would you suggest? Um, if you don't know LA, you come from somewhere else, stay your ass in Hollywood, stay near your hotel, um, cause they're not just out there walking around like, oh boy, who got shot was, in deep South Central hood, somebody walking down the street said, oh, blood over there, and got him. Somebody just living somebody, in the neighborhood. P&B Rock. Yeah, P&B Rock. They just, oh, he over here? They but just, I heard he was actually living here in Vegas too, so they should have. No, in, in the Cali. But but I'm saying, he, he ain't. I mean in Cali, so. He in, he in South Central with this big old gold chain and diamonds, and he on this video on YouTube, counting mad bread. So they're like, oh, he a lick. They came to rob him, but I, I guess whatever, something happened, he got shot, but you know. God bless him and his family, but you don't come in LA that's flexing. Like right. You believe it or not, we were at that particular one. Was it that one that we were at when the lady I think it was Manchester that one? Yeah. She told me that somebody had just like, ran right. in there and and robbed somebody like some for they right changed before. uh uh at the at the door. Okay, for it frequently it, happens. For you uh visiting motherfuckers, there's five or six Roscoe's. Go to the one off Sunset and Gower. That's Hollywood. Don't go to none of the other ones. No, nope, don't, don't go to La Brea. Don't go to La Brea. There's bloods and crips over there. Stay your ass at the Gower because there's a police station down the street. So a lot of niggas don't really, the riders ain't walking down. They don't live in that neighborhood or nothing. Pico and, and um, 
People on the bread niggas live in that neighborhood. They'll walk up to the to the Roscoe's and rob mm -hmm. your ass. You know what I'm saying? There's one on La Cienega in Manchester and Inglewood. Don't go to that one. Mm -hmm. Shiny, you know what I'm saying? The one on Broadway and um in Manchester. Don't go to that one either. Stay your ass away from the hood. That shit ain't cute. Don't think, oh, I don't go to the hood. It's fun. Oh, I went to the outside. Do you nigga. go? Hell, well, I go, but I ain't going out there, you know what I'm saying, flossing up and, and loose. Stuff. Yeah, I ain't doing all that shit. But I do, go you think they do you think they lose money, though, Roscoe's, by people... You know, no, scared niggas to go. Niggas love food. We know what it was. You out here high signing. You out here with this hundred thousand dollar necklace on and counting thirty million racks. We think you got bread. We gonna rob your ass. Because I've asked some rappers. Even after that, I'm like, okay, so the, would you be? Would you walk more selectively when you, especially in Cali, when you go certain places? Would you tuck it in or leave it at home or leave? It? No, I'm from where what I wear. I bought this. I'm not going to scared to make nobody, you know, that type of tough guy. Right. Mentality. My condolences are uh, in advance. <laughs> you, all right. You go out there, you bulletproof. Superman is bulletproof. If you ain't Superman, stay your ass out the way, man. You tripping. Yeah. Tuck that chain. Put all that shit in the hotel safe and then go out and enjoy yourself. Man, you too stupid to be out there thinking you're that tough. Man. You ain't bulletproof, man. So when you, okay, so... The, Okay, you got to think about it, man. You know, back in the days, Too Short was in Oakland, you mm -hmm. know. Did you ever deal with Too Short in yep. Oakland? Yep. Uh, in the Bay? Did they really call it the Bay? Yep, Oakland. Like, mm -hmm. what was, what was, uh, Too Short was early to the game. He was, he was like earlier than everybody. He was a pioneer. When you first heard Freaky Tales and all, mm -hmm. the, all the stuff, the and, and that, be a, that bitch, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. he, had a, he had, that was his word, he should have mm -hmm. went on mm -hmm. <laughs> that. You play any of that old Too Short shit in LA at a party, people lose their mind. To this, to this day. day. Like every word, yeah. <laughs> so, don't, don't, you, don't, 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 don't. Man, we be jamming. Yeah, so when you think about just just Too Short and his era, like like what sticks out to you and what did that do for our culture? I think he he uh, he gave a lot of he he let it known that you don't need a record label to come out. He gave birth to E Forty mm -hmm. with that mentality. E Forty was like, oh man, I can take my dope money and and buy and put up and press up my own stuff and sell it out the the beauty salons or whatever. Like Too Short did. I think that's probably what sparked Easy E too. Wow. Everybody started, you know, everybody was looking for a record deal and, and trying to kiss every little record company's ass and, and getting fucked. Here come Too Short selling shit out of the trunk. And shit went crazy. So Too Short was the one that really he first that introduced off. us to like an independent type Hustle. look out the trunk. And and do you think he get the credit deserved for starting that whole movement? He he does, and he did then. Everybody credited him then. You got to think about it, I was in the 80s. Yeah, of, co so, of course. you know, if you know your history, yeah, they probably don't talk about it now. Yeah, but this is something that, you, you know, when you look at Too Short, when you look at all those guys, man, even Master P, we got to talk Master about Master P. P. Master P was one that, he from the South, like mm -hmm. me, and uh, I, I felt good about it when I seen him. I really, it was a different me feel too. than the Scarface thing for me. Scarface, the ghetto boys, that was, don't get me wrong, they was Southern, but it was something about, they looked more universal to their, their movement than P did to me. They looked more like they was, I don't know, for some reason it felt like, New York and all them was just getting along great. Everybody loves Scarface, okay? Yeah. But real, when it come down to Master P, it was something different about him and the way he sounded, the way he carried himself. It seemed like a Southern feel to me more. Real country-like. And I ain't right. saying, because you, you would hear Scarface and them talk about the, 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 the Fifth Ward and all that other stuff. Um, so you did hear it. I guess it was just a production. It was something different. That, uh you know what I mean? That uh, it was it was something to that, bro. Yeah, he 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 showed uh, you know my my memories of him. He showed his the inner city, the the real rough part, but his vernacular. Yeah, he sounds southern. Yeah, they, really, Scarfing him didn't sound southern like that. That's what I think too. That's it. It had so to be something like, different. You know the way he talks. I can't mimic him, but he he, he, he <laughs> oh he's, he's from the south. Yeah, like, off top and all the interviews he did, and um, I met him. Him, Silk the Shocker, and C Murder at Priority Records. Okay. The day he All signed, right. the day he signed the deal, I was in the, I was in the elevator with C Murder. Mm. I thought he was Master P. I said, "Man, I love what y'all doing." And they I kept talking alike. to him, and they yeah, they alike. both tall, and he's like, "Man, I ain't P. I'm I'm C, man." I said, "All right." So I went upstairs because Cube signed a Priority, Mike Ten signed a Priority. So I'm up there all the time with him getting checks. Yeah, and they thank you, Cube. <laughs> 
But uh, so I, I caught the elevator up with them, and they just signed a deal. And he was like, they were like celebrating and everything. I was like, okay, what, what do you do? Mm-hmm. But he he was like one of the first that said, look, I don't want y'all money. I just want y'all distribution. I'll I'll pay for my own records. And now that most deals people don't know, the artist gets like nine percent of his record. Eighty percent goes to the label. Wow, that's much. The the A and R get more money than the artists do off records. Man, and then uh, then you know. The producers break up, you know what I'm saying, the other 10% or whatever, right? So P's deal where he gets 35% or 30% and the record label gets 70. I mean, he gets 70% and the record label gets 30. He flipped it. He flipped it. And I heard the percentage. I was like, damn. How did you hear the percentage? I mean, the record label. Yeah. They're talking they were about, talking it. about they're, it. They're talking about it. How did, what, what, and he talks about Michael Jackson's lawyer helping him. I remember that. Uh, just to understand the business, like when you heard that and knew that that could, did that give you a sense of man, you know, we can flip it. Yeah, well, my my thing at at that time, um, I, I was up at Interscope for for different stuff. I'm playing bass for everybody, right? Okay. So I'm at all. The, I'm playing bass. I play bass for for Death Row for a couple records. You know, did, uh, New York, New York, but New York, OFTB. Yeah. Thank, what's up, y'all? Yeah. Um, I was playing for them, so I was going up there Interscope collecting checks, whatever. But I'd be at these different labels. And I'm seeing the labels when they first start, basic, boring ass label, look like rented chairs and shit like that. When these albums start blowing the fuck up, now they got fucking TV screens and the big label lit up and Moving. all this neon lights and all this bullshit. I'm like, damn, they, these niggas are making these fools money. I said, why don't we own our own distribution? Yeah. So when Ma- Master P did his deal, I was talking to Suge, Easy E, and Q. I asked all three of them niggas the same thing. I said, why don't y'all Stop making these labels all this money and get your own. Because all they're doing is distributing. Y'all got enough money to fund your own records at this point, you know what I'm saying? Um, Easy said, nah, niggas ain't gonna get along. Cube said, niggas ain't gonna get along. And Shug said, everybody's gonna wanna be um, chiefs. Nobody's gonna wanna be Indians. Everybody's gonna wow. think they need to be more important than the next nigga we end up fighting. I said, but still, y'all, these white labels still making the money. Somebody distributing that shit. Y'all need to, you know, and we still ain't on that. Wow, let me ask you this, and I, I'm gonna jump subs because you just mentioned Easy E. Like when Easy E um, was, he got diagnosed with AIDS, and two weeks later he was dead. Mm-hmm. The fastest death you 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 see Magic, uh, he get he catch a, he gets HIV. You never hear Easy dealing with nothing close to I'm um, fighting this. Instead, of, it's pretty much almost like he came and he died. Mm-hmm. I remember this. Mm-hmm. Um. Did during that time did you it did it happen as fast for you being that you was in L.A. Yeah. as it did for me being in the South? Mm-hmm. I th- I think it's totally different though because you got to think about Magic being an athlete. They're getting checked out by doctors almost every game. Every game, and, and so he's a bunny. That makes sense. Most black men we don't go to the hospital unless we dying. So he might have had mad symptoms and was like, man, give me some more rope, you know, rope tussle. Give me some NyQuil and, uh, you know, drink some more tea. I get it. I and my get mama it. told me to get put some honey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he probably was dealing with it. He might have been dealing with it. He might have been dealing with it. And then wow. boom, he just, oh, take me to the hospital. And, and it was too late. Too late. Wow. And we was, that was early on. Like, everybody wasn't, uh, nobody was even dealing with that. That was the big bad wolf in the room during that time. This was... You know, because before that, people don't realize it. Like, when you was with old girl, like, we didn't even worry about that. Mm-mm. We didn't even, all you had to worry about is the claps. That was about it. Look, bro, that <laughs> shit. It was another time, I don't know who, if, if Magic Johnson or, 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 or uh, Easy E got yeah. HIV first. Who, I can't remember Magic who got John- it first. Magic Johnson? Magic Johnson, I think. I think it was Magic. You mean it was Magic? Mm-hmm. So, I used, so I used to play bass for BBD, right? And so we in the studio, um, recording a song and somebody invited a bunch of girls in there and they, you know, half naked looking all good and everybody's like, oh, well, right, that's mine. Everybody picking one out, whatever, whatever. And they said, breaking news, Magic Johnson has a big announcement. So the whole room stopped and we stood in their face in the TV and Magic's t- talking about he got HIV and blah, blah, blah. And we start thinking about all the wild parties that Magic been to and all the girls that go to every little wild ass party. And we start looking at the and girls in the room. some of them are there. <laughs> yeah, we start looking at the girls in the room. Yeah, y'all, like, y'all go home. Yeah. 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 They killed the mood. They killed the, the, the damn mood right there. Get up out of here, man. And then, then Easy used to have the wild parties. I knew home yeah. girls would go there and they'll get mm. drunk and naked and all kind of crazy stuff. And it was like, when, when that happened, them same girls is everywhere. Oh man, that, that messed that up changed, the, that changed the, game. the whole that game. That changed the game, and I was a little whole. 
then in my youth, you know what I'm saying? You had to slow down. I was down. knocking them down. Oh, y'all want to be like, you got to show me what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? You, you slowed to, down, didn't you? I, st I stopped. That was it for me. I was like, oh, man, I can't end up dying. No, mm. hell no. No, I think everybody slowed down, even in the he, South. Because when he died, we thought AIDS takes you down like that. Like, yeah. Oh, shit, he just got that. He was just in the hospital. And he died like damn. So we was terrified. So I know I was yeah, terrified. I, guess, terrified. I can't speak. Yeah, I was right. terrified. Everybody was terrified, I believe. That was a scary time, man, because yep. we didn't have the medical, we didn't have the understanding oh, yeah. of the research hadn't been done. Or the knowledge of anything. The knowledge. I imagine regular people who didn't um, have the money that he had, who thinking, had you know, and didn't have it, and thinking that, man, if he have money and he just died like that, yeah. like, where's the hope for anybody who don't have the money? Yeah, yeah. I stopped on my one night stands immediately. Did you stop immediately? <laughs> what? I was like, hey, how you doing? Let's go over here. You know and what anybody po possible afterwards was like, hey, did you take the test? I need to see the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that easily ready, though, I don't think. During nah, that time. No, nah, no, nah, nah. But you didn't you even would, know. I was going to the uh, Dolores Tucker uh, free clinic in Inglewood and getting my little condom. <laughs> And getting checked out, <laughs> man. Yeah. You start seeing people. Hey, what you here? I'm for a checkup. Yeah, right. Man, I want to. I want to ask you about <laughs> this. I was going to ask him about this one guy. But go ahead. I just want to ask um because I know you talk about a lot of sessions that you've been in. You talk about you've been there with Easy E, been in there with Tupac, you've been in there with all these other people. What is the best session you've ever been in in your life since you've been doing this? Oh, I, I uh, I'm glad you asked that question. I've been thinking about this. And I, and I ain't told, everything had to do with Ice Cube. And I, and I ain't told him uh, uh, what I was going through at the times when this shit was happening. So I, I'm the funny nigga, you know what I'm saying, in the neighborhood, I'm bagging on motherfuckers. Your mama look like woo woo, you know what I'm saying? So I'm silly, um, but I'm with Ice Cube. I don't know Ice Cube. And so from the you know videos and everything, he's hard, you know, the cube, you know, he look crazy and shit. So I was like, so I ended up playing bass for him and he called me into a session to play based on one of his singles. Um, he just, this is his fourth album, so it's Lethal Injection, so he really done as a single, produced by Layla, may he rest in peace. But, um, you know, so the, all of them is Crips. I'm from the Blood set, right? So he called me in to go play bass. And I'm like, damn, for Ice Cube, I'm a fan of Ice Cube, he's the top, he's like playing, that's like playing for Prince or Michael Jackson, he's the top, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what, I'm hyped up. I was so hyped up, I thought I might, even get shot. I was willing to get shot to play bass for Q. Wow. So I'm like, so I told two of my homeboys to come and we all had guns on us and shit. So we walked in there and it's, it's, it'd be like 30 people at a cube session. Everybody mama there, right? And they're all Crips. They're all from 111 Crip and whatever. So we ended up nervous and shit. I walk in there like I'm gonna risk, risk my life to play for Q. What? So I'm playing bass and I saw I'm like, nigga, you right here. Oh my God. But I had to be cool. This is what you saw. What's up, homie? And so I'm like, look at that skew right there. Oh, shit. And then they told me the bass line, and I was playing it wrong at first. The cube said, no, I was like this. But dude, 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 I'm looking, nigga, the cube was right here. What's it like? It was crazy. So I'm like excited. And if you know me, nigga, I'm tripping. My homies are laughing at me and shit, but I had to be payback. All right, let me play this motherfucking. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, so I played the bass line down. But then the cube was like, all right, that was it. I want to lay my vocals. I'm like, nigga, I get to see Ice Cube play his vocals. Being a big fan, that's like me watching Michael Jackson lay the vocals for Beat It or something. I'm like, what? I could not believe that shit. Nigga, I was tripping like a motherfucker. And that was like, I played for BBD, but Cube through the hood was the man. You know what I'm saying? So the hood, my homies told the hood, and the hood was like, oh, baby, we heard you, nigga. I was the man. Nigga, what? The single came off right away. We were like, nigga, I was hyped up. That was like, I could have died that day. I feel like I accomplished something. I played bass, you know what I'm saying, for the biggest act. I was tripping, man. I was a big fan. I had, I made fan videos. Like I was loving Cube, you know what I'm saying. And then, um, so now I'm working with him. And so the next uh, big thing that that happened was with him. Um, we had Cherokee Studios. It was just me, him, his wife, and brother Ron. And he said, uh, we just laid, I laid bass on a beat. And he said, uh, I, want, I want you to hear these raps. Tell me what you think. I'm like, nigga, Q, going to say a rap to me, nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. Man, I was hyped the fuck up, but I had to be cool. All right, homie. So we go to the board. And he, he's organized. He got this shit typed out in a, in a, a folder like he in school. Going through some shit. He started busting. And then, and then Brother Ron said, Q, right in the middle when Q's rapping, Q, like, motherfucker. 
Like what? He turned around mean mug. I thought it was like easy E. You know, he was beefing with NWA. I didn't know what the fuck he was looking at because he was looking crazy. He was frowned up. And I looked frowned up. So I turned around and frowned up too. I think it was Rick James. Wow. No. Nigga. I'm a bass player. You know, I know all this shit. Listen to him. Got me playing bass. Listen to him and Boosie. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nigga. And my son, and son, I'm like, nigga, that's Rick James. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, son, I'm like, I love you. Rick James. I'm like, nigga. But Q was like, what's up? Rick was like, Man, if you need anything, you know what I'm saying, I'll sing, whatever. And I'm looking at him like, God damn, nigga. And he said, thanks for letting me talk to you. I'm like, nigga, really, nigga? I want to hug him and shit. So I'm trying to, I'm in fidget. I'm like, damn, I want to, that's Rick James. He right here and shit. I want to hug this nigga and tell him, no, I've been playing all your songs. And I want to play, you know what I'm saying, all this shit. But you got to be was, cool. I got to be cool. So then he left. And I was like, what the bathroom at? And he was like, <laughs> out the door to the left. All right. So at Cher Cherokee, we're, we're way in the back. It's a long ass. Ooh, there's a long, there's a long ass hallway. <laughs> nigga, I ran in that hallway. I broke the records, nigga. Guy. My knees was high. You even play football. I had my knees high. <laughs> Flew out that motherfucker. So that kid, Rick, I'm like Rick, Rick. He hopped in the car in a convertible Mustang or something and just peeled out. I was like Rick. I was like, I was like Rick. I was walking in the studio, nigga. I was happy. I wanted to hug Ice Cube and shit, but I did. <laughs> All right. okay, what we doing? So you didn't even get to talk to him? No, no, I get to tell Q outside of the work. I didn't know him like that. So I was just like, I had to be payback. So you didn't even get to talk to I, Rick James? I didn't get to talk to Rick James. So I was just like, but I was hyped up. Nigga, I got to make Rick James. You met him, so. I was in the room. This in close. the room, yeah. Nigga, that was everything. Nigga, Rick James, that's, you know, like the That's idol. hard, man. You know what I'm saying? That's like, hard. you play basketball as a kid, and LeBron, and Kobe walking, or Jordan, you like, nigga. So I'm like hype the fuck up. So, so that was, that's, that's two. two. I need that third one. I got really so it's four. You get four. So uh, we had Echo Sound. I mean, we had a uh, Street Knowledge Studio, Cube Studio. So Cube stopped what we were doing. His phone rang. He answered the phone. He's like, "You got him. All right, bring him here." And usually Cube's got this 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 look on his face. But then he looked at me and, and get this goofy ass chase the cat smile. Niggas, he was like, "All right." That's what the fuck this nigga smiling at me for and shit. We all, you know, we cute, we hard, we South Central. You know what I'm saying? He's like, what the fuck this nigga smiling at me for, man? It's like, nigga, he look at me, I look at him like, nigga, what's up? So then about 10 minutes later, the back door hit, boom, boom, boom. He make the smile. What the fuck this nigga smiling about, man? What the fuck, you know what I'm saying? So he get up, he go walk, open the door, and I'm hearing him and a whole bunch of people walking back. Then I hear, yeah, you know, something is funky, baby. Some shit like that. And I was like, nigga, no. And Q clocked on the corner like, yeah, nigga. He was walking in with George motherfucking Clinton, nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. And so I'm like, oh, nigga. I want to hook you and shit. But I didn't. Oh, what's up? Nigga, I was like, nigga, I was, oh, I was faint. I was like, nigga, this is George motherfucking Clinton. So there's a couch, like a two-seater couch in the studio. George sit right next to me. I almost passed out. But I had my bass plugged up and everything. So I'm looking at him. He don't know me. Um, he do and he don't. Let me tell you that story. So he's sitting there, and I, you know, like older artists think younger artists don't know who the fuck they are. You know what I mean? So he's probably thinking he don't know who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting with, facing him with my bass. And then I start playing some, some uh, parliament shit. I play Flashlight. And he turned around real slow, like, like, how does nigga know that? All right, all right, okay. Like I'm my young 20s. He's looking like, okay. But he didn't say shit. And I'm like, yeah. So then he was sitting there like, we waiting on Cube, so he starts humming shit, boom, boom, tsh, boom, boom, boom. Tsh. So I had my bass plugged up, boom, boom. Tsh, doo, doo, doo. Oh, I had like a little kid, I'm hyped up like, nigga. And then he looked at me, he said, okay. We started singing something a little bit more difficult. He goes, boom, boom, tsh, boom, 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 boom. I was like, boom, boom, tsh, boom, 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 boom. Give me a little high five. I was like, nigga, I'm, oh my God, I could believe this shit. And then he sang something else, so hard. Boop, 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 boop. I was like, boop, 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 boop. He was like, man, he gave me a high five. He came and he left. And that was that experience. I was just like, I don't know. I was like, man, thank you, man. Oh my God, George Clinton. Did you tell Q, thank you ever for doing that? Yeah. I, I told him, but he don't know what I was going through. Like, nigga, I was tripping. I was like, oh, God. He don't know how big it was for you. He don't know how. I could have died that day, too. Like, nigga, I'm probably. So, then the third time. That's the fourth. That's the fourth. Yeah, the fourth time, the charm, same shit. Uh, he like he hit me up. What's up? He'll page me. Just back when he had pages and no cell phones. So he'll page me. I got pull over the payphone and shit. He like I'm like what's up? 
He said, Cut, where you at? Can you come to the studio right now? Three dollars? I'm like, yeah, I gotta go home and get my bags. He said, don't, don't get your bags. Like, uh, okay, like I don't sing, nigga. Like, all right. So I pulled up and I knock on the door. He come to the back, open the door. He got that grin ass look, that stupid ass grin on his face. I'm like, what the fuck is this nigga smiling for? for? <laughs> and we, so we walk and it's dark. That's the corridor, this corridor. And he turn around, look at me, smiling and shit. We getting closer to where the studio was. We get closer, and they got here like, yeah, baby. I, he turned around and was like, like, I know you know that motherfucking boy. <laughs> nigga, I'm looking at that nigga, I'm getting hyped up, nigga. I'm like, oh shit. But I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? We turn the corner, nigga is bootsy. Nigga, I'm like, look, thank you. He know the feeling in. Like, I'm looking at him Collins. like, nigga. Oh, thank you. Oh my God. So it's Bootsy Collins. That's and he's sitting there, and I'm sitting there looking at Bootsy. Oh shit. So I sit down here, Bootsy's as close as you are to me, and Q's here. Um, I'm my heart beating, I'm like, that comes. I'm here with Cube and Bootsy. I'm looking at Bootsy. Oh, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and Bootsy like, what's up, baby? I said, man, I'm clean. I couldn't even think. I couldn't talk. Nigga, I was, I was hyped. That's I was, big. Nigga, I was hyped up. <laughs> He's the reason why I play bass and I'm doing what I'm doing now. I learned all his shit. You know what I'm saying? And Cube had me playing all his shit. You know this record? I'm like, yeah, nigga. And so, uh, damn. And I was so ner I was nervous as a motherfucker. I was hyped and happy as fuck. But I was nervous as fuck, so Boots, so Boots, you star bass, the one that's on all the records, and she was on the ground in the, in the case. Q looked at me and looked at the bass, said, you want to touch that motherfucker, don't you? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but I'm cool, though. Man. Yeah. I looked at Boots, Boots like, go ahead, baby. That's crazy, man. Have you played it? He handed me the bass. I forgot, I forgot how to play bass. <laughs> I looked at the motherfucker like, oh, oh, oh. You had the opportunity oh, right man. there. And dudes, and he was like, play something. I couldn't, I forgot how to play the bass. You I didn't know what to do with this motherfucker. I, no, I did, look. So I'm like, okay. So my talent, my gift from God you is, if I hear a beat, I hear a bass line in my head right away. And then I figure out what's in my head on the bass. So Q knew, let me play this beat. Boom. And I started hearing the bass line. Boom. Boom. Doom, 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 doom. I started playing that. And they were like, oh, that's dope. Bootsy was like, that's dope. Play that. And I was thinking, Bootsy's here to play bass. It was for KD, one of the Cubes artists. So I was like, I'd hate KD. to take it. Yeah. KD. Man, the nigga used to spell out everything, didn't he? Yep. I remember KD. Yep. KD, baby. Yeah. So, um, shout out to KD. So I was like, man, I said, I hate to take still KD's. Uh, Song from Bootsy playing on it and have me playing. I'm playing all kind of shit. You know, let Bootsy play. So I act like I forgot the bass line. But then the craziest part, it was a lady. Um, damn, I can't think of that. She'll kill me. Juliana Bolden, I think. But she was writing for this, this magazine called Rap Pages. And so she was interviewing all the musicians that play on these records. So she wanted to do an interview on me. I had <laughs> pictures, you know what I'm saying? I ain't nobody. I had no professional headshot, shit like that. She's like, I, I don't want to take pictures of you, so let me know what's cool. So she happened to call me right after I put the bass down. She called me and was like, a page me. I called her, like, who is this? She's like, this is Jolene I didn't take them pictures of you. I was like, what are you doing right the fuck now? She was like, uh, I can come to you. I said, I'm at Street Knowledge with Bootsy and Q right the fuck now. I need you to bring your ass down here now. And I asked them, y'all cool, take pictures with me? And they're like, yeah. So she came down and captured the moment, took pictures with me. And I Where are those pictures at? They're on my Facebook and, and Instagram and Mr. Them Payback. Up, you know man. I'll send them to you. I'll send, send them, them to, you. to me, man. So I got a picture of me and Cube, and I'm holding the star base. Then I got another picture before the star base. I'm standing against the wall, and the face I got on is the face I'm talking about. I'd be like, mm -hmm. I'd be like this, but nigga, I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, they're both pointing at me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was, oh, that, was, that was it. That was the top everything. I, I met Tina Marie, ba Barry White, I, I, you know, Tupac, whoever, Biggie. But I those seen big it all. Yeah, man. Let me ask you this, man. What? Because you got faith on your hat, man, which is dope. I love it. My daughter's middle name is Faith, man. Is that right? Yeah, right. man. I you just, real spiritual, bro. You yeah. quote scriptures. I know it's, yeah. it's like God is all in you. Yeah, bro. yeah. You, I, you don't God mind is it. real. Boom. Yeah, yeah. But that's because of what I've been through. But okay. just, man, just the, 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 the way that you talk about Cube, you know, the way that you, you know, the things that he done for you, you know, and you mm -hmm. done for him, uh, uh, really built a relationship, man, like a respectful relationship for him to call you during those times mm -hmm. and to have you to come down there, man. Just just give me a breakdown of what Q really means to Clint Payback saying. Everything. I, I wouldn't be doing, like, playing bass. Uh, most times people don't look at credits on records. And so you don't know who did what, you know what I'm saying? But Q, 
would set if Cube recorded at a studio, that studio became popular because you want to run in the Cube. You know what I'm saying? So um, most studios had multiple rooms. So we might be in one room and then uh, you know Tupac or somebody else is in another room and they'd see me with Cube on bass, so they would label me as Ice Cube's bass player. And I ran with that shit too. You know what I'm saying? I might use bass player. You know what I'm saying? But hey, man, why don't you come play on our record? And it just went off from there. And then people on the East Coast found out, oh, that's the dude to play that. It's Ice Cube's bass player. And I'm getting flown by Arista and these big labels to uh, to New York and wherever to, to play, bass. play bass. So that that lended that. And then um, I was like the musician hookup for him. And he was recording a lot of records. Mac Ten doing Yo Yo. We was doing The Lynch Mob. Katie. Westside Connection, you know what I'm saying, Dub C. So people call me for bass, but then they're like, you got a guitar player? I'm like, yep, you got a keyboard player? Yep, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I was just in everything. So I made a lot of money just for his, my association with him, being seen with him. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the word spreads in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like one time, Kim, his wife's cousin, Sir, brought Cube and Pockets over my house to play basketball. I used, I used to have to rent this big house with a basketball court in the back. And we played, but then Sir told the whole hood, Cube was playing at mm-hmm. Payback. Prince House, Payback House, you know what I'm saying? Now everybody's talking, and everybody who do beats and whatever is it's, it's, it's in the hood, and they're right. hearing this. So now I'm getting calls from a bunch of people I don't even know. Wow. DJ Lad, Ice-T wow. camping, this wow. boom camping. Man, I was, I was DJ Utaka, DJ Honda, who's like huge right now in, in Japan, they had me playing bass. It was just, I, it was crazy because of association with him. And then I started doing beats, and then just because I was down with Ice Cube, uh, they were like, um, they would they would want to buy beats just to say Payback did it. Yeah. Like, who's down with Ice Cube? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Open so, all the doors. Open up all kind of doors. So I, I ended up uh, with that. I You didn't know me from successful records. You knew me because of association with Ice Cube. Yeah, that's so I, ended, so I ended up doing... Um, uh, like on Soul Plane, yeah, Snoop yeah. And, and Kevin Hart, I redid uh, Gin and Juice. When you see Snoop yeah. walk in, I did that. Wow. wow. And so a lot of people's first things, I was like 50 Cent had a, um, uh, the 50 Cent comedy, his first pilot, first him getting into this film side, mm-hmm. I did the theme song for his film, his film thing, but based on, this is, this dude works with Ice Cube, or he's down with Westside Connection, wow. he's down with Dub C and Mac wow. 10, and, you know what I'm saying? So That's it, big. A lot of a lot of this just kept spilling over. Yeah, my that association went on to this day. Wow. I I, I when I was up uh, coming up here, I was uh, I was trying to link with Dub C, man. Like uh, you and Dub C had to do some work together too with that West Side connection and everything. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I, I was working that. with dealing with Dub C. I, I deal with Dub and his brother Crazy too, man. He rest in peace, man. Um, R.I.P. Yep, from the uh, Dub C in the Mass Circle to the present. I just seen him a couple months ago, but um, I, I used to play on all his records. I ended up, you know, Coolio was a part of Dub C and the Mad Circle. So I played on Coolio's demo on to his first, his first record. But y'all got good conversation. I like, I like how y'all team up. Man, it's, y'all got good conversation. We both got different, different ways we ain't flow nothing, with it. Ain't nothing written down, ain't nothing. No, 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 no. Asses. We don't do all y'all that. Y'all got good conversation. It's real. It's, 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 it's real. real. I think that was the most important thing for me to make it a real conversation. Yeah. I don't you, want it to be something that's, like, I want to ask about certain people. I'm sitting there thinking, like, I, I thought about, uh, 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 I got five on it, boys. I thought about while you was talking Pooh Man. I mm-hmm. thought I th- I'm telling you, I'm on the West Coast, I'm thinking about like what was the old groups during that time. I'm in my mind mm-hmm. because I love music. Right. When you love music as a fan, then my kids love music. That's why I know it's real. Like mm-hmm. my conversation be real. Be real. It, it, I That's know right during questions. those eras, I was loving the music, bro. I had two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Punch 45, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I was rocking y'all the music. Mm-hmm. I was buying everything that y'all was putting out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I should be able to relate to you from a fan perspective. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Now, see, being saying, one, that's a real conversation. This Then to season it with what you said earlier about God, mm-hmm. that's my that's my ministry and part of this. To where you say, man, you say that like the faith thing, you know. I know already that faith without works is dead. That's going to be in uh, uh, Hebrew 11. But I also know the just shall live by faith. Mm-hmm. When I started thinking about it, it comes in Roman, and then it comes in Galatians, and then it came from Habakkuk. I know this already. 
Boy. You see what I'm saying? So right, I, that's what, no, it, it's really a, a but it. Michael right. Farrakhan. When we talk, it's a real conversation. It, yeah, yeah. It, I think the biggest mistake is not to have balance when you deal with people, and and to not come from a real place. Right. To know that you know most people get so religious that they can't have balance or even deal with people. Right. And I just refuse to be that guy. I love the fact of. I'm evolving all the time. You evolving. And mm -hmm. God don't need no person in no one spot. He loves us until the end. How about it? So I ain't trying to hear none of that judging or putting nobody in a box. It's all about loving us through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how come the show be. That's the, that's the difference. That's where y'all going. Oh, y'all bossing up. Okay, okay. You should be in the high rise right now. We can flip the camera. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at but, the strip right but, now. But no, you think, you, you, like, like, when you think about just uh, the females, you know, you work with Toy, uh, the girl, you brought her by the young lady last time. You work with, who else you work with, Yo-Yo? Um, Every female rapper on the West Coast. Who was, uh, uh, you know, Supersonic, you didn't work Rams. with them. No, J.J. Stop Fadden. playing, man. No. That, was, that, was, that, was, that was my boy, Alonzo. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> J.J. Fadden, yeah, I didn't work with him. I worked Did with Did you Rage? Fine. Huh? Rage? I rock rough and yeah, stuff rage. with my alpha puff. Way right yep. now. You rage. work with us? Yep. And I work with uh, the Five Footers. I work with um, Silky Fine, Sugar T. Um, I'm probably forgetting somebody. It's Mike cussing me out right now. Um, Erica Kane, Agent 99. It's hard. It's a, it's, a it's a lot of female rappers that work. Um, uh, 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 Shanta. I work with the brat. Um, Man, I'm from that six four four double. <laughs> she's hard. Yeah, she's that was her era was real crazy. She's she's dope. I had did a song for Shanta, and the brat happened to be next door recording, um, and they ran aside saw each other. Oh girl, da 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 da. If y'all don't know who Shanta is, she did the song with Timberland. Love to love to love yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. And Shanta got big lips and handlebars. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah yeah yeah. So she was signed the aftermath. Dre's label. And so um, they saw each other, whatever, and I had a beat ready for them. And then she went there and wrote it and uh, and bust like quick from scratch. And I was like, that was impressed. I just thought to my, you know, she was a studio rapper. Somebody wrote her shit. And she just, no, nah, she went in there and wrote her shit and started busting, like killing it. But Dre uh, didn't put the record out for some reason. It's, so the song's sitting around here somewhere. It's jamming, too. Wow. Man, so other than that, man, we want to thank you for coming back on Boss Talk 101. This won't be the last time. Man, thank you. I, hey, man, we going to always rock with you when we in Vegas or in L.A. I appreciate you know what it. I'm it's saying? a blessing for me, Every man. time you look around, we're going to be kicking it. People going to be like, man, I seen you on Boss Talk. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey. Because this is why the stories, you know, the, the truth be told. You know what I mean? This, mm -hmm. is what a, this is how the foundation lay for the OGs, man. People, they fall in the gray. Yeah, they want to know. Okay. We, you we know got what I'm wisdom, saying? man. I can teach you stuff, man. That's you know what, what and that's what this is all about, man. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss is talk. Yes. Say, yes, man, yes. this has been a. Hey, yes. how can people get a hold of you? We gotta say that too. Instagram. Just look for Mister Payback. M R Payback. One word. M R Payback. Mr. Payback at Instagram. Man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a man, let's, talk. Do, let's do some more, man. Why we got you on the lights off? <laughs> <laughs> and we out. Hey. <laughs>